Formnext 2022, and I'm here at the Materialize booth, and I'm here with my friend Vishal. Hey, man. Hey, how are you? I'm, I am great. Happy Formnext to you. We're here showing off incredible things, and you're here at Materialize, and you have something cool to show me. Is that right? That is right. When we talk about 3D printers, a lot of times, you know, I cover a lot of things in the consumer world. Mm -hmm. We have machines, and we have slicers, and we have materials. Yeah. But your software sort of exists in a part of the industrial side that there really is no analog on the consumer side. Is that right? So our software is, uh, is about controlling the processes on the factory floor. There we so go. So it's about on an industrial yeah. factory, there are different pieces of hardware, printers, non-printers, uh, ancillary devices, and other devices. And the software is about managing the personas, the processes, the printers, the devices, and everything that goes on the factory floor. So in, in that sense, it acts like a factory operating system. That's really cool to hear. And yeah. that's, I think, that's what it's really difficult for people to, to understand. So let's, let's take us through a, kind of like a, a default factory setup. You yeah. would have personnel. Yeah. And you would have printers yeah. and a various number of printers. Yeah. You would have non-printers, yeah. so computers and workstations. Or, or even other devices like post-processing devices, CNC equipments. Um, oh, we're, okay. All those kind of equipments, not necessarily IT equipments, but like equipments needed for production, but beyond the printing process or like powder mixing process, for example, and so on. Oh, and then with all of those, the materials as well, that has yeah. to be managed. Yep. So your software is able to do this. Right. The software allows for different processes that happen. So typically on a factory floor, be it be on an industrial OEM print, like OEM company, or it is, it is a large service bureau or a small service bureau, typically their request could be coming via traditionally via an email or something, and they receive an STL file or a TMF file, and then they need the process from uh, which allows them to track the request to the delivery of the request. And during that process of taking an incoming request and then producing the part, shipping that part to the customer, there are many, many processes happening on the factory floor, many personas, the persona that is working with the customer base internally, the personas who are working to load the printers, the personas who are trying to prepare the build file, somebody who is doing fleet management. So all these personas and all these processes and all this data generation all of that is managed by the CoEM platform using different modules. So the, this CoEM platform is divided into like a plan, do, check framework. So anything that okay. comes in from order and creation to delivery, you do a planning stage where you do preparation, scheduling, then you do the printing and the post-processing, you check, and all of that is going into a data lake. But the ultimate benefit of CoEM platform is different partners. If the customer doesn't get the best of materialize only, but the customer can get the best of the AM ecosystem in one environment. And by, by customer, you mean like the, the bureau owners, yeah, the, operators. The end customer, the, 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 the end, the end yeah, customer. Yeah. think BMW or Boeing or like people who are truly adopting, and not only BMW and Boeing, but everyone <laughs> right. else like <laughs> Ford, GM, you name it, I'm not pro. BMW, right, right, pro. everybody, everybody. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so the software allows, as you can see here, right, there is an order management module, which now we have uh, Magix integration here. Most of the customers are using Magix today, so here what you can see is uh, there is a part which has been received from the customer and now we can visualize the revision tree. This part has been opened in Magix and has been cut here. Being able to see history on geometry is, is fascinating. Yep. Once the order is now prepared, you've cast it, coated, you're working with the customer, now you go into production. As you're going into production, you're doing production planning, you're creating these platforms, you're tracking assigned platforms. You can open that in Magix or in a, in a web-based. There is a trend oh, towards- Oh, and there's, there's a bed and there's a part. Okay, yep, yep, okay. Yep, exactly. The and part. then you've identified this machine as an EOS machine? Exactly. And so is this representative of the machine you've that identified? Is, that is correct, huh. that is okay. correct, yeah. Then you go to the scheduler because now you have scheduled the builds here. Now you can see when they are planned, when uh, when are they going to be printed and so on. Oh, Some of these so, are connected to the printers. Yeah. So we actually have the ability to see a printer's queue. Correct, exactly. Oh. Yeah. yeah, you can see the printer queue, you can plan your queue, you can plan your downtime and whatnot. And these are the processes which they have been, our customers, the pain point is they've been doing using Excel sheet or they've been <laughs> using sticky notes and that Wait, 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 yeah. sticky notes, sticky are we, st notes. it's 2022, it's 2020. man. 2020, you go on Spotify, you get music recommendation, you go on Netflix, you get movie recommendations. Right. But in the AM world, you don't get an automatic orientation recommendation. <laughs> 
or an automatic material recommendation. How can software shrink this gap and allow for the industry to scale, allow for our customers to scale, and that's what the CoAM's mission is, to bring a software which can allow our customers to scale. Well, I, this is fascinating too, and yeah. I, I really appreciate your explanations here because yeah. I'm starting to, I think it's starting fighting to gel because yeah. as, a, as, as someone who owns many, well, if, if I were to own a lot of machines, yeah. I would want to use them at, at as, as much as I could. Yeah. I would want the least amount of downtime yeah. and I would want the best performance because I need, the, I need to recover the cost of the machine yeah. as fast yeah. as I can. Yeah. And your software does that. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. No, this is this is amazing. I I had an idea. I've done some research, and yeah. I, you know, it, it software that helps run a bureau. Yeah, it's it's an interesting thing because yeah. it's very specific in what it's trying to provide. Yeah. and you've you've covered all of the bases. Like yeah. it seems like like you explained at the beginning from this part to this, you know, part yeah. part inception to part shipped. Yeah, you've got it all. Yeah, yeah. And those things which we don't do because we have the app store, we are allowing uh, our partners other companies on the, um, like here, for example, to, to plug in, because ultimately, one of the problem statements that our customer is facing is they're using 15 different softwares, like in any given day. Like, I'm downloading a part from email or SharePoint, I'm loading it in Magix, I'm downloading into GrabCAD, I'm loading it back to the printer, then I'm using an ERP software, I'm using 15 different software. And that causes a lot of friction. I would it, imagine it so. It causes missed deadlines, wrong parts being printed, <laughs> higher cost, on one hand, AM, we're competing with CNC and injection molding. Sure. We want to bring the cost down, that's how the industry can scale, and on the other hand, we have to use 15 different software. So, so, so our mission is how can CoAM shorten that? Like, how can we shorten the gap? How can we reduce the cost? How can we help better ROI? That and, makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. these partners here, do you have just an API? that yeah, they can yeah. access and correct okay so for someone to become a partner they just work with you and then they can they have access to your api and yeah. then they're integrated into your system yeah so we have this app store program through which the partners can apply and once they apply they get documentation of our um, app store and they can now develop their apps and they can choose where their app show up their app can show up for example on scheduling or can in order management as an example i'm going to show you here in production scheduling, uh, somebody can have an app. So this is a build job, and okay. here is the here is the app. This is a not a real app oh. from EOS Print, and they can just inject another app, and it goes to the app store. Now you can actually look. Okay, this is an auto nesting app. It is automatically looking at your backlog and preparing the build platforms and scheduling it behind the scenes. So now I don't need I to see. put a human to do that if we can tell the machine to do that and encode those rules. That's cool, man. Oh, that's, I, you know, I love all this information. Yeah. We have to wrap it up. I know yeah. Formnext is going on yeah. and you have lots of other people yeah. to talk to, yeah. but if, look into that camera right there and yeah. let people know where they can go to find out more information. I would like that um, like people who are trying to scale their AM business learn more about CoAM and they can go to the CoAM website at uh, materialize.com and learn about it. There we go. Yeah. Hey, have a good rest of Formnext, my friend. Yeah. Thank you.